All righty. Go ahead and get rolling. Get started. Get a couple people on. So I'll just kind of sit and chat. Hopefully everybody had. I look terrible. <laughs> Hopefully everybody had a awesome uh, Memorial Day weekend. It was pretty quiet. We had nice weather on Monday and semi nice weather on Sunday. Saturday was kind of rainy. So it was um, uh, a pretty quiet weekend. So for those of you here in the States, it was it was a holiday weekend. Those of you in other parts of the world, I just hope you had a really nice weekend. But it's kind of the kickoff to summer. Um, you know, it's kind of summer kind of goes from Memorial Day to Labor Day here in the U.S. So I got a little bit of crafting in, not as much as I would like. Um, it's doing some family stuff and all that kind of thing. It looks like we got quite a few. We got somebody from India. We got somebody from Germany. I know these uh, morning times work well for some of the other parts of the world. And I know the, the evening on Friday works well for like the Australians and that sort of thing. So, um, we'll just wait to get started till we have a few more people. <coughs> I used to do a thing where I'd start it up and just have a sign that we'll get started soon so that the chat could get going and gives people an opportunity to um, to get here. But um, I hate having that big thing on the front of all the videos, especially when I'm leaving them up um, on YouTube. So instead, you just get to listen to me blather. <laughs> so anyway, um, so today we are going to be um, working on the box that our album fits into. So um, I'm going to kind of walk you through the construction of it. It's super simple construction and then we'll be embellishing on that. Um, whether or not, it depends on whether or not I have another, the next project ready to go as to whether or not we're going to do um, one more class of embellishing um, the pages um, on that. Hey, hey, Lori, I'm going to be up your way this, this coming weekend. Um, we will not be having a show on that note. We will not be having a show on Friday as, um, uh, Sarah and my husband and I are going to drive up to, um, um, Canada. We're going to be in British Columbia and Alberta. We're going to go up to Banff and Jasper. That was the one place that Sarah and I wanted to spend a little bit of time. We had that work into our schedule um, last summer when we were driving to New Hampshire. And when we had the car trouble and got stuck in Kelowna for a day, we lost that time. Then we ended up getting stuck for two days in Medicine Hat, <laughs> so um, Alberta, which is not in the pretty mountain area part. It was kind of in the middle of the flat. So, um, it would be kind of like being in Iowa, <laughs> so kind of thing. So, um, but so we, before, sad to say, but before British Columbia catches on fire for the summer, um, we decided let's go up there now while it's uh, potentially um, okay weather and no forest fires. The last, unfortunately, and it's really sad that the last two summers, uh, British Columbia has just been quite literally on fire and the smoke by August gets so bad. It's really, um, it's just a total haze <laughs> over most of the province, I swear. So, um, even, even then, you know, when we went through there in August, it was very smoky, but we ended up leaving Kelowna that day, um, at about six at night. And we got into Calgary about 2 AM. So we went through the pass and past Banff and Lake Louise and, and all of that, but it was in the pitch dark and there was construction and very, a lot of smoke. So we didn't see anything other than some dark shadows of the mountains. And so, so we decided to go, to go do that. And then my husband decided to come along as well. So we will be taking a long weekend. It's kind of, this is kind of our summer vacation kind of thing. So we're going to take a long weekend. Um, 
And I will have to, I, we're probably not having Tuesday because we're planning to come back on Tuesday. So, but I may plug in maybe a class on Thursday. If I decide I want to do one more of this one, uh, we'll do that on Thursday, what, Thursday and or Friday. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the, uh, the last angel of the elements, the water angel done, um, by that Friday. Um, I am trying to get a bunch of kits shipped out before I leave on Thursday. So, um, I'm, I'm going to focus more time on that than on getting that paper ready. So we'll, um, but the next project will be that angel of the elements of that water angel. Um, so also the other thing too is I, um, Oh, I'm sure we, we, whereabouts are you, um, Lori, there in BC? We go up to, Col Sarah and I have gone up to Kelowna several times. We go up to Vancouver all the time, but the, that's, you know, that's barely into BC, but we've been up to Kelowna. We absolutely love, 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 love Kelowna. So, um, but we're going to go up through Kelowna and come back, I think through Kamloops this time. And maybe, we might even go up through, um, Eastern Washington and Penticton, um, up there this time and come back down through, you know, Abbotsford and all that stuff. So, oh, you're in North Vancouver. Okay. Been there all the time. <laughs> I swear every few weeks, Sarah and I go up to Vancouver. Sarah's, Sarah's a wannabe Canadian. I swear she, um, um, she goes up there all the time. Now she's got a couple of friends that have passports. So, um, they go up Oh, like every third weekend and she's not even 19 yet. So it's not going up there just to drink, but, but, um, um, we just love it up there. I just, it's, it's just, it's so beautiful and it doesn't, well, Vancouver's, you know, obviously crowded, but, um, it's not nearly as crowded as we run into here in Western Washington. I think that's the thing, like, especially with this holiday weekend, it's just, no matter where you go, it's just crazed. So, um, we appreciate the less crazy crowded, uh, bit of being up in, uh, in British Columbia and Alberta. I know that, that Sarah and I and thoroughly enjoyed doing the trans Canada, um, route across, um, across the country to get to New Hampshire last August. It was so much more relaxing than driving across the U S which I've done that three times in trans Canada than the one time. Um, just, it's not nearly as crowded. <laughs> so I shouldn't say that though, cause then more people do that. But anyway, um, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have, um, a great time and I'm glad my husband's going to take some time off, um, to go. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Anyway. All right. So it looks like we've got a few more people here today. So, um, we can go ahead and get rolling. This, um, is part of the free tutorial, um, that I have available. You can get the supply list and cutting guide, which includes for, um, the box, but I'll also give out the dimensions on the box, um, here, um, today. Um, you can get the, uh, supply list and, and cutting guide on my blog, on the latest blog post on my website at lauradenisondesigns.com excuse me, the paper collection I'm using and it's currently on sale is called sky's the limit. And these, um, all of my digital papers, um, and my, um, patterns and tutorials, the cats just knocked something down right outside my, um, door. I think it was the hockey stick that we used to remove the snake that the cat brought in. But anyway, <laughs> um, those are all on sale and because the sale got started late because of course I had some website issues that took a while for Carol to figure out, but she's amazing and she did figure it out and got it all straightened, even with me having complete meltdowns, which I do. Um, so she uh, got that all fixed up, but it got the sale up about 24 hours late. So I have extended the sale. It was supposed to end last night at midnight, but I've extended it till about six o'clock this evening. So if you wanted to get 40% off of any of my current patterns, and then I have the, um, the, um, that also includes the video tutorial patterns. And then all of my, um, <coughs> digital papers are on 20 to 
20 to 30 or 20 to 25, something like that percent off. So um, it's a good time to go ahead and pick any of those up that you may be interested in while the prices um, are, are um, on sale through, through today. Um, Joy also has put the, um, a link on the chat for both my website and for the Sky's the Limit paper collection um, that I'm using on this project. However, you know, you can use any, um, Pepper, did you knock that down? My cat just came in. Um, any collection that you, um, you want to use. So, um, anyway, all righty. Thank you, Joy, for putting up those links. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let's get started. I put a mouse on my laptop because I was getting so frustrated with the, uh, but it's not a wireless mouse. So I got this another cord. All right. So the box that we are um, doing has it to where the lid hinges up and this face hinges down and our album and I'll show you how we're going to tie that all in. I had to tie it on there differently and then I came up with a better way to do it. It's going to have ties that tie it in the front and the back so that it's attached to that spine. And so then, whoops, tie that popped out of there and it's running around loose. I got to get these embellished so that they stop popping out. So once they get some embellishment on there, they stay in there better. So anyway, this will be attached to this flap it'll pop in like so the top folds down and hooks on and it's like so um i i'm not recording this separately joy it's because it's automatically records um onto youtube and since this is going to stay here on youtube rather than being um exclusively on my website um i don't need to record but um thank you for for asking. So, so what we're going to do today is, um, get this embellished. I'll show you how you tie the album in and all that kind of good stuff. I hate the delay too, Joy. It's really, really annoying. <laughs> so that pops out and this one it's tied in folds down and the album pops out. Okay. So let's go ahead and go over what all is on here and I'm not recalling the sizes so I'm going to have to measure because I don't have the supply list in front of me. I think this is an eight and a half by a Oh no, this is, um, this is a, um, 12 by eight and a half by 12 for the, the sides. And then the front and back are both three and a quarter by 12. So you have two that are eight and a half by 12 two that are three and a quarter by 12. So then the bottom is eight and a half by three and a quarter by eight and a half is the bottom. And then on the lid, it's a little bit larger. So it's, it's eight and five eighths by three and three eighths. So it's an eighth of an inch larger in each so that it, you know, fits over the top. This front face right here is three by three and three eighths. And these sides are three by the eight and five eighths. And uh, you don't need a template or anything. You can just, um, you can cut it at an angle. You can cut it at a wave like I did. I don't know why I did a wave. It just seemed like the thing to do at the time. So then what we're going to be doing is then using construction strips, you're going to turn your lid and it's just got this one face, the two sides and the top. And you use construction strips to form the box lid. You're also going to use construction strips to form the box itself by attaching the sides and the bottom to this back piece. And then we're going to hinge on both the lid and the other front piece. Now, one of the things in here that you can see is I have some little, um, stacks of, it looks like one, two, three, four, five little 
and you can see them in there. They're a little half inch by, you know, inch and a half, inch and a quarter little um, leftover strips of chipboard that I stacked up. And I put it about an inch and a half back along this bottom. So it's about an inch and a half back and goes across. And what that is for is that when your album is tied on here, it's a little ways, it's about half an inch up from the bottom. And so when the album is attached on, as you can see, see there's a, let's get this out of the way. see there's this gap. And so that's to allow the, um, this, the um, cover of the album, since the, the spine of the album is a half an inch up from the, the bottom of the box, I want this end of the spine to be resting half inch up from the bottom of the box. So it just gives something for this to rest on so that, because otherwise what would happen is when you put the um the album in there it would pull in this in like so because it would want to rest on the um the floor of the box so it would pull that in so to keep it flush having those on there to to um, <coughs> to have it set on so then at the top here this is hard to do when this is a pretty good sized box um I've taken my score tape, my, or not my score tape, my hockey stick tape, my fabric tape, and I put it both on the outside and the inside of this joint. And you want to allow anywhere from a 16th to an eighth inch gap in there to, to allow it to hinge. So that's hinged right there. You could also do this with fabric strips. You could do this with um, paper strips. Um, but if you have uh, purchased some of the cloth uh, hockey stick tape, it works great for these little hinges. Um, I've done the same thing down here at this bottom edge as well. But before you do that, you're need, going to need to punch um, some holes into this back spine. And those are in about a half an inch in from the sides. And... They're between three eighths. This edge is at half an inch and this edge is at three eighths of an inch of this hole. So from the ends in and they're over about a half an inch. So you're going to do those at both the top and the bottom. And that's going to allow us to string some ribbon through there in order to tie that, tie this on. So let me go ahead and get some ribbon out and show you how to do that, but I'll pull it back out again so that we can um, embellish. So I'm going to do, the distance those are apart, which is probably about 11 inches, but I am going to do approximately, well, let's just do a three foot piece because you need, so you need the back side, the front side, and then the tie. So if you do about a yard on each side, so one, two, three, so you're going to need about two yards of ribbon to do this. I had it tied on differently and it was like, okay, that's not working very well. And <laughs> it was just cumbersome because you may not want to leave it in the box. You can look at the entire album while it's still in the box without any issue whatsoever. It works just fine um, because you're just going to have the box and then your, your album will be you know, sitting right here and you'll be able to look through your, whoops, upside down. You'll be able to look through your entire album even when it's attached in there, you'll be able to look through the whole thing and then it folds up into the box. Um, but if you want to be able to remove it, you can do that. So you're going to feed this down. I'm going to cut this at an angle. So once you have your box all assembled, you're going to feed one of them down through the top and come up at the bottom. Actually, it's easier to go down through here. Go down at the bottom edge. Let's get my second one ready to go. Quiet crowd today.
Okay, so they're both coming up through that bottom, and then they're going to go down again through the top. Obviously, I'm going to pull these out to do my pattern paper and uh, on there. Or you can actually, with it being a flat ribbon, we can put our pattern. Actually, you know what? I think I might just put my pattern paper over it. Then it doesn't slide all around and it kind of hides it. Yeah, I think I was going to put my pattern paper right over the top. So. so flip it down. Make sure it's. pretty even. That's pretty even. So that gives me my strings there. So and then I can take my album. Let's do this first side. Lay it on there. And it's in this front. I would probably knot this rather than just tying it at this point, but because I want to take it out right away, I'm going to just tie it. So I just leave that there, and then I'm going to do this to the back. So then that's tied in so that when I then flip this up in and then close. It. So you can have it to where you put, put the pattern paper on first and then put this on or, um, or like I'm going to do, I'm just going to cover over um, my ribbons. So, and then you open this up and it flips down and then all the stuff that I have loose in there flops all over the place but then you can go through the entire album and it's just nicely tied in there so alrighty so I want to go ahead and embellish my box so we'll go ahead and take our al album out and we're good to go so I'm just going to tie these for the moment so that I can get the outside done. Now you can cover the inside of your box if you choose, since it's going to show while people are looking at the album, or you can uh, just leave it plain. <coughs> I didn't have, or I, well, actually I do have it black. If I'd have been thinking, I would have probably used black um, chipboard with black um, construction strips, and then it wouldn't have been so. Um, as obvious as so, but I didn't, so, all right, so, all right, so let's get out our, papers. I had been planning those to be I like the idea I like him on the right this is part of the reason why on the um, album itself because the album when it's in the box if you decide not to do the box then you can embellish your cover but um, the cover doesn't really need embellishing I'm probably going to do the cover pretty simple because when it's in the box you don't even you know it pops out and pops open you don't really see the cover so if you're doing the the album in the box you don't really need to do much to the cover I'm going to do more here on the box itself and the, the unicorn's a good one 
Obviously, the papers aren't quite large enough to cover the box because we'll have some, some accent stuff on there. Um, that's a possibility. This is another one. Any of these pattern papers that you like would work well. I also like this one is another one that looks good. Um, you can do both the same paper. The beauty of the digital papers is I can print um, the papers the same for both sides. So I, I like I like that and then this picks up the same sort of motif but I also like the idea of this one and this one or it could be those two because they have this band on the bottom and what I can do one on one side one on the other and this could potentially be the spine, oh, I like that. So this kind of a little flower guy, this is on the spine. I can do the unicorn on the front and the gate on the back. I like that. Okay, we'll use those three. because They all have that band kind of going across the bottom. <coughs> so let's do that. Let's trim those guys up first because then we can add whatever we want to do for the embellishment as well. So... Alrighty, so um, let's go ahead and trim this one down to um, the width. And I'm going to add something so we can wrap around to uh, <coughs> the back side. So if that is three and a quarter, so I'm going to cut it to four and a quarter. So if I put where I want about the center, let's cut it to four and a half. It's easier to do the math. So four and a half, two and a quarter. So I'm going to put wherever I want the center. At about the two and a quarter mark. Oops, you can't see. Um, where I want the center at about two and a quarter mark on my cutter. And cut that. And then go over here at the four and a half line. And that gives me that nicely centered. These two I'm going to keep full size. So um, then I'm going to Let's pull that up and out of the way for the moment. 
Um, these guys are going to fit on here. Now I can go low. I might do that to where I'm about because when this goes down, it covers over a corner. I can center it vertically and put a band at the top and the bottom. It's more like what it's going to cut off. Now, the way this swoops, it doesn't bother me. So I probably will center it vertically and horizontally. It would be the same sort of thing with this. It's not cutting anything off. So I have no problem with it being that shape. Okay, so then I want to put a band at the top and the bottom. Let's see. I might have to print something real quick because I wasn't thinking. Because I, let me just use this. You know me, me and my stripes. Audition the stripe. I like the stripe on there because I'm also thinking the stripe would look good on the the top here. So we have the stripe at the top and the bottom, also on the edge of this, within an accent color. Maybe this. This one is an accent. No, I think it wants to be. Otherwise, I think this goes with all of them. Having this pink and then with the pink ribbon. That's why I did the pink ribbon. I like how that's going to look. And then along the, the other edges might be a nice place to put some of the dark. And I like the dark on the edge. Now you could tape these edges, um, but I think I want to go with the paper. So it looks like I'm going to need to print the stripes. And I don't think I have enough to do all of the. No, I know we need to do that. I can do that to the front. Now I think I want that as an edge. So not quite enough of this. So I'm going to need to print those two. Um, real quick, and I should have done this in advance, and I apologize. So, so this take me two seconds to pull this up and get it printing. I was going to print these out before. I, my husband called me literally minutes before my show started with some really, really sad news. So I'm just a little... Still processing all of that. So let's see. This is under. Is it under this one? Yeah, it's under this one. Okay, so the stripe. Stripe structure for me. Cool stripe. There we go. And then I need the dark brown. Okay. So anyway, um, I'm so thrown off. This feels like Monday and it's Tuesday. I'm going to be off all week long. <laughs> I always hate that. Yesterday felt like Sunday. Both Saturday and Sunday felt like Saturday. All right, so those are printing. Get that up in case I need to print anything else. And there we go. So, um, cool bands. All right, so if we pop this up and out of the way, and if this is 10 inches and this is um, a 12 inch, so I'll need an inch at the top and the bottom. I think on this bottom, I'm going to have it to where it wraps around to the bottom. So if I cut that the, for the bottom strip, that's an inch and a half. Oh, I need this pink one too, because it's not quite right. Now. Oh no, I have a pink one. Okay. So an inch and a half strip for the bottom and an inch strip for the top. So I'll be able to get that out of this. Mm 
Und das war... I love how jo Joyce gets Botox, she was saying, for her migraines. And she's like, um, yeah, the first 10 shots hurt. But after that, you, you said, don't you get like 30, some, uh, 30 or 40 shots when you get these Botox injections, Joy? But I know they help with her migraines so much. Lois is, yeah, 40 shots. Yikes. Lois is saying how she likes the blue stripe. We did blue stripes for you while you weren't even here on Friday there, Miss Lois, just in honor of you. So I'm going to do three sets of one and a half and one inch. One for each side and one for the front and back. Though the front hinged one only needs one inch at the top and bottom, but that's fine. Alrighty, and so then I'm going to cut these in one inch strips to go on the corners. So one, two, three, let's go with four. And these we can score in half. Because you're gonna go around the corners. I've been working on the In Suspense. I'm trying to get that one done before I leave. And if you guys are really, 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 really good, I might give you a quick little sneak peek so that you know what it looks like. Um, I will have a handful, and I mean a handful, of the steampunk version, only because I need to round it to for, for ordering purposes. I need to round it up. And then I will have a few of the fairy version um, as well. Um, kits wise. I, I know I don't like to put up many kits, but because these are a kit that's been um, in the process for quite some time, these aren't necessarily a new one. Um, but because I need to, for ordering purposes, have to round up to, usually you have to order in multiples of threes and sixes. So um, there will be a limited number available. Those of you who have already ordered the whole series of either the steampunk or the fairy realm will have um, have those um, will be receiving your kit um, already. So um, <coughs> um, that's where that is. Um, so. Um, Oh, the pink. I need to catch the pink. Whoops. Turn that up. I also have the third one. 
designed and I will be working on that one as well very soon. I'd like, if I can get it to far enough along, uh, I'd love to ship the second and third one together. Um, and we'll be doing the third one later this summer. It's not going to go back to back, but I'll get those. Those will be lovely to get those out of here. <laughs> Okay, so this is going along the bottom edge. Yeah, so I'm going to cut. Let's cut some 3 8 inch strips. The bottom and top edge. So I'll need four of these. I just asked, please don't blast me for having a few kits available. I am working very hard getting stuff out. I'm trying to get as many out here before I leave this week um, that I can in terms of some of the other projects and that I don't have a huge, 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 huge number of kits that have to be shipped. My biggest backlog is getting patterns done, to be honest. So we also wrap around that corner like so. So this will go here at the bottom. Since I'm going to have that wrapping around at the inside, I'm going to also have this wrap around at the inside. Actually, I'm going to center that because it's going to wrap both ways. Um, and I'll notch it out here at this corner, at the two corners, so it can wrap this way and this way. And then I'll do the one inch and it will wrap up at the top. I'll add the accent piece on the bottom and top edge up here. And then, then I can center that on there when I attach that and then onto the front. So I want to mark about one inch up from the bottom edge. So then I place that on that line. Actually, I'm going to put this second strip right on this edge so then I know it's right by the edge. Okay, let's ink a little bit just because I don't know what might still be exposed. So again, I'm going to center this and that would leave you around, well, that's a little, it's a, it's a fat half inch. Should have peeled this off underneath here at this bottom edge. Oh, I've done the zoo. <laughs> Marcy's talking about doing this zoo field trips. I've done those. Yeah, <laughs> fun times. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to notch out 
at the corners. So I've notched those corners out. We can, oh, oh, I need to put some tape on the bottom edge here. Sorry. Hang on. Let's go on the bottom edge of this little tab of doodle so that it wraps. Now on this one, I need to notch it slightly differently at this front. I need to notch it so that the bottom edge is above where the joint is. So I have to have that. This flat lid is annoying me. So it's got to be above where that joint is. Get this guy back out again. Then put the lid down. The lid flap around is making me absolutely crazy. So you can see how it's above that now. If I didn't have a tripod sitting here, this would not be anywhere near as cumbersome. But because I have my tripod sitting here, all this stuff flopping around is craze inducing. Peel that off and wrap that around to the back. Peel this off. So I run my bone folder along this edge to crease the fold in there and then wrap it down. You're less likely to have it be wonky that way. All right, so that gives us our one inch along the, the bottom. We're going to do our one inch along the top edge. Okay, I'm again centering it and aligning it with the very top edge. And I should have um, inked it, but I didn't, so I'll have to go back and ink it. But I want to ink the top edge of the chipboard as well, so that's going to wrap around, and that's going to wrap around, and this is going to get covered, so I'm good probably. That'll probably be the only spot that I want it. So now we can do this edge. Okay, now I'm going to attach my side pieces with the, the brown accent. Three-eighths inch tape is going to run out, but I have another rule. Okay, so I got three-eighths. I debated as to whether or not it was the half inch I debated as to whether I needed and I decided I didn't.
so this is going to go onto these back corners. Uh, is that not going to be quite? Oh, I'm going to have. I'm going to have to splice my pink because I will need it to go too. Yeah. So I'm going to need that at the top and the bottom because this is a little bit wider than this is. Okay, that's fitting there perfectly. Why are these short? Why are these not the 10 inches? My brown ones only came out. Say so what? Why are those a quarter of an inch short? Well, let's get where's the tape on these. I'll use those on the back side. Um, let's do. I don't know why that's a short. I didn't turn it. Weird. Okay. I must have something on my. I was printing some other stuff yesterday, and I might have something on there that's size to fit or something like that. So. <coughs> Let's do two of these and I'll make it work on the back side. I'll splice it on the back side. Okay, so let's set these aside. Of course, I already put tape on them. Is that always the way? Because it just seems strange. Actually, this should have been exactly 10, and it is. And it was like, okay, why are these short? Strange. You know, Marcy, that is so awesome that you do that with your grandchildren. It's something they will always remember forever. And the fact, and I'm sure your, I think it's your daughter's girls or your son's, but anyway, their parents will forever appreciate the fact that you were available to those kids the way you were, and they will always remember. So it's just, it's so cool that you do that. I mean, when my kids were born, I grant you, I was older when they were born. Um, and we made the decision for me to be at home, which turned out to be with Trevor's difficulties, turned out to be, you know, the absolute best choice that we could make. But I think the only way I would have been able to, you know, continue with my, my career outside of the home was if... Um, for instance, either my mother or my mother-in-law were in a position to be able to do like what you're doing. I, I, you know, I don't fault people who have no other options, and but having to put their child in childcare. But for myself and my husband, it was a decision that we chose to make. And um, so I just greatly appreciate, you know, that you do that for them. And then this is going to wrap to the inside. So there you can see those are wrapped onto the inside. Now we're ready for this guy to go on there. And I'm going to attach these to the bottom and top edge. Now these are ones that could be, um, if you made them wider, you could have that punched edge on there. I'm just going to keep them plain and simple.
And especially with twins. I know when when Trevor was born, we had him in I went to part time and we had him in childcare three days a week. Well I you know, and I worked three days a week um, at my office and then I would work from home the other the other couple days. Um <coughs> And and that was that worked fine because then I was only having to pay for three days a week of childcare. Now with, and it was um, when he was especially when he was a baby. My next door neighbor did in home licensed ch childcare, so she watched him when he was a baby, and then he went to a Montessori school when he was a toddler. About the time went just before Sarah was born. But once Sarah was born, it was like okay, I'm going to have to go back to work full time because I won't be able to pay for two childcares on the part-time otherwise my entire salary would be going to childcare and I go well that's dumb <laughs> so I um then once uh Sarah so once Sarah was born is when I we decided that I would stay home and we'd figure it out and that's I bumped up my um at the time I bumped up my my uh quilting business a bit um and that was working fine. And then once, about the time I was starting to consider maybe going back to work because both kids were in school and all of that kind of thing, or either that or I was going to start being able to travel and teach with my quilting more, um, is about the time when Trevor had his issues really come to, to uh, a head and then Sarah's medical stuff all started. So... You know, it just all worked out. Um, and about that time is when I got started in paper. So it all works out. And Trevor's doing well. He's got a new girl that he's super excited about. So everybody keeps your keep your keep your fingers crossed. He's like going, Mom, this one might be the one. I'm like, oh, well, true. You've never said that before, but it's like, we shall see. <laughs> he hasn't had the best of luck with girls, so <laughs> we shall see. But he's he's super excited about this one. So we shall see. They seem to have very many common interests, which since Trevor's interests are rather odd in some cases and that she likes the same things that's always a good good sign uh, well the, the one problem Marcy from working from home is it is a 24 7 365 and when when things get crazy, as we all know, it does. Um, as we all know, mine did. <laughs> and something has to give, unfortunately. You know, hard choices have to be made. And unfortunately for me in recent years, the thing that suffered the most was the business and all of you. But I'm working very hard to get that back on track. And I am, for the first time in a very long time, I think I am seeing an end to it. And I feel like I'm kind of come out of the fog. I know I went through a pretty rough stretch here for a bit. That was more um, my mental health than anything so um but it's it's coming back and i'm feeling i'm kind of coming out of a fog i'm pushing you know pushing it's not an easy task to push through a major does um creative slump um but i didn't have choice so you just do you do what you gotta do you know kind of thing so all right let's go ahead and put this strip on I'm having approximately an eighth of an inch showing. It's just a little accent. Nothing more. So attach that little eighth inch strip to the bottom.
And it's attached to the top. And I can put some. I'm just going to attach this down with tape. I was a bit worried about me, <laughs> Marcy, so I think I've just been giving out so much for so long and it just, I just emptied the tank. So I think with Trevor finally being home and settled and things moving forward for the first time in 10 years, I could kind of relax. And then it, it, by relaxing a little bit about worrying about him, it kind of just hit me, you know, in terms of my own bit of mental health. So you just keep, you just keep fighting. That's all I can say and do. So, all right. And everybody has to go through it in their own way. So, you know, how I cope with it may be different from how other people may have. Okay, so I'm going to have about a quarter of an inch-ish on each side. And then it's going to center also vertically. We can also add um, uh, any flowers or such that you want to to add to the box, or the outside of the box. I'm just going to leave it plain. Some projects I'm really I really feel the idea of putting extra embellishments like flowers and stuff on there. Some you know, some I just ne don't necessarily. This one I'm just keeping it all very simple. Put that off at the top, but I'm gonna hold this up a bit until I get that pulled off off the side. And then lift this one up. I have this pulled out. I leave these little tabs until I get it placed. Because as we all know, score tape, once it grabs, it really grabs. All right, so that gives me the front. I'm going to do the back. I'll do the back the exact same way. And let's do this guy where we're covering over our that's standing up. And this one I'm going to put it at the bottom. I'm going to do a one inch at the top and the bottom, but I want that to also wrap to the inside. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the, the grass and all everything is doing its thing out there, and it's just death on allergies. So I've got the one inch for the, both the top and the bottom. I'm going to close this so I can set that on top of it so it won't fall in all the time. So I'm not doing it the inch and a half at the bottom to wrap to the bottom because it's already got the tape that wraps around to the bottom. For those of you who want the sale price but need to wait, like Jeannie is just talking about, can't wait till she, to do the first. If you want the sale price on these patterns and, and papers and stuff, one of the ways, and I'm only telling you here, if you go ahead and put your order in before I turn the sale off at six, but, but put it as pay by check or money order, and then... After the first, I mean, I it's per preferred rather than waiting for a check that it goes through PayPal. But you know, you can also you can send a check. But what you can do is get the order in that will give you the sale price, and then when you're ready to pay for it, if you if you're willing to pay for it like on the first, what you can then do is let me know, and then I can move it into payment pending, and then you can go in and pay via PayPal the same way as you would as if you were doing it today. So for those of you who need to, I know, you know, many people need to wait until the first when they get paid. Um, so you can do it that way. So Jeannie, um, if you want, you can do that. Um, 
So if there's things that you want, and that way you can take advantage of that sale price. So Jeannie, we're glad to see you here. I know you've had some conflicts and other activities going on and haven't been able to make it to the live show, so we're glad to see you back. All right, so we'll do this. So that's going right close down to the bottom, just above the joint. So we're just coming over those flips just above the joint and covering over those holes. And then it'll wrap around to the inside and wrap around to the inside. But you want to make sure that your, your ribbon is in the placement that you want it before you attach this on. The paper I'm using today is called Sky's the Limit. Everything has you know, clouds and sky is the ba background, the base on the backgrounds. Now when I leave on Thursday, I will have my computer with me and I will have internet access. Um, through Wi-Fi and my phone, and we have full coverage in Canada, so um, good to go there. Um, so I'm going to cut that to the width. Yeah, if you're going to use that method of doing it, I do ask that you do pay as close after the first as you can. Because um, you won't receive your downloads, your papers, or patterns until um, your thing completes. So just be aware um, that it's kind of almost like a layaway kind of thing. Because um, the system just is set up to do it that way. So... All right, so then that's going to attach on there. Again, it's got that little accent. Sarah's doing quite well. We're getting school all finished up for her. Considering all the health issues, those of you who've been around for a while know she had back to 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 back health issues. Fortunately, her migraines are now only occasional. So, um, thank goodness for that. After watching what 
what so many of you and especially Joy goes through on a regular basis with the migraines. I'm so thankful that she seems to have grown out of a lot of that. I mean, they could come back at any time, but knock wood, they don't. Um, but she's doing, she's doing well, planning to go to school, um, locally for a bit here in, um, in the fall. So I've got that and what I've done here is I put tape at where the edges of this little accent are and then tape for where it wraps around to the inside. Let's just peel it off here at the bottom to start with and I want this to visually line up. One that's on the front edge. Um, Marcy, that's complicated. Sarah tends to like some of the more complicated hockey boys. Um, I don't know how else to put it. Um, so sort of, but not officially. Um, we are going to be stopping in Calgary, which could potentially clarify that one because the the latest boy it plays hockey in Kelowna but he's lives in Calgary in the off season so who yeah. wait a day it changes <laughs> lots of boys who would love to be said boyfriend but the one she tends to like did I put that on upside down? No, I did not. She tends to like the complex boy. <laughs> I don't know what else to put it. All right, so then I'm going to fold that down to wrap that to the inside. Nothing serious at this point, no. But as I say, give it a few days, you never know. <laughs> it changes that frequently right now with this one. But, you know, she's still just 18, so she'll be 19 in August. It, no, it's not so much that they have issues. They're just complicated. They've got a lot going on. Let's put it this way. When they're, they're hockey boys playing at high level, relatively high level hockey, they've just got a lot going on in their lives. You know, big time stuff like NHL drafts and stuff like that. So... All right, so that's how that's looking. And that wraps around to the inside and then I'll cover that inside. Or actually, yeah, I'll cover I'll go ahead and cover that inside and then um because it even when you have the the book tied in there, I I think I'd want it covered. And I'll probably end up covering the inside of my box as well. There's ribbons inside. So that's whoops. So that's how that's looking so far. And we'll do the, the other side in the back. And just in terms of time, let me go ahead and work on 
um, this top and then we'll do the back and then we'll do the back side if we still have enough time. So um, put those set aside. Where's my stripe? Oh, I used up so much of the stripe I don't have. I have to I think I'll have to print another stripe. Huh, I used up so much of it. Because there's not quite enough there. Tall and nice. Okay, so that's a good thing I didn't close that window. Um, let me print another one. Oh, she has plenty of time. And she's picky. She's really, really picky. So, um, you know, that's good. And she's not bothered by it, so all the better. <laughs> It's been fascinating having one of each gender and that how it all goes. <laughs> it's it's fascinating how different things are these days. Talk on the phone, that's bizarre. Um, everything's done electronically via, via Snapchat and texts and stuff like that. It's like talking in person. Trevor's much a little bit more old fashioned and like he likes to talk on the phone. And he likes to um, meet in person and stuff. You know, Sarah's more electronic and a lot of the people she talks to are long distance, so. It's just fascinating. The difference, too. Alright, so I'm going to cut some I'm going to cut a couple of I'm going to need one more of these. Let me print another one while I have it open. Because um, I'm going to be cutting some three inch strips out of it. See, this is this is exactly why I love the digital paper. I can just print out whatever I need. I don't know if I'd have been able to handle more than one of each. <laughs> I'm glad we stopped it too. <laughs> the paper I'm using here is just cardstock weight. It's 110 pound cardstock. It, it's also called index. Um, when you go to either an office supply, you're buying cardstock. If you're going to like the um, big box stores like Michaels, um, Joann's doesn't have, I don't like this stuff from Joann's as much, but Michaels and Hobby Lobby have cardstock. You don't have to get the heavyweight cardstock, just the standard weight cardstock. Um, Hobby Lobby has started to carry um, ream packs of 200 sheets. Um, and those are great. And that's the weight I use the stuff at Michael's also. Um, you can get them in 50 sheet packs. Over the weekend they had them on sale for like, they ended up being like two bucks a pack. Um, and those are good deals. <coughs> you can order it off of Amazon. Um, if you want to print it on a lighter weight paper, you can also do that too. I've printed these out on, in a pinch just because I needed to see what it looked like and I was out of card stuff. You can print them on paper. Um, I've done it even if you have the right printer. Let me show you real quick. Um, I just saw this a minute ago. You can get vellum that you can print on on vellum. I printed on. I've printed some of the papers. This one I smeared it, so that's. I have the black on it, but you can print on the glassine bags if your printer will allow you to do stuff. Um, and then you just you have to just attach it onto a sheet, a carrier sheet. But you can print on this the glassine 
So I've printed a classic. And then we're going to do a class on this in the future. I've printed on two tags and envelopes. It all depends on if your printer will allow you to do the heavier weight papers and stuff. So a lot of them will if they, so, you know, it's just a matter of knowing what your printer can or can't do. But so you can print on things other than just cardstock. So. Yeah, twins are, I had twin cousins growing up. Now I wasn't around them frequently because they were, um, they lived in Chicago and I was in Alaska, but I do remember that twins are a whole different ball game. Yeah, at one point Sarah was, was talking to a guy who, who's, father was a twin and had twin sisters. And I said, this one works out and you're with him long term. You got to watch out, sweetheart, <laughs> because um, there's twins in my father-in-law's family, too. So it's just like, just be aware. Okay, so I cut three and a half inch strips to go with the, the uh, sides and then also for on this front edge here. Let's mark so that it wraps. I love stripes because you can also cut on the line. So those are those pieces. Tape these up. I try to give out the information about the paper um, whenever I am using. Um, I need to, that one of the things that is on my list of things that has to get done is I need to do my frequently asked questions. When we, we set up the website, that is one of the things that got lost in the whole shuffle. I didn't realize it for the first several months. And then it's just getting that all put back together and adding a lot of information. And it's just not been high on the agenda when I have so many people that were, were and still are waiting to get all of their past orders attached onto their accounts. So <coughs> I, uh, I will be getting to that. You know, I have all these grand plans whenever I'm going on one of these vacations that, oh, there's so much things that I'm going to get done and, you know, in the evenings and stuff. And it's like, yeah, no. It's hard to work when you're trying to do stuff with the family. Oh, I didn't want to do this tape along this whole bottom, but I did it anyway because I got it. It's going to get cut off, but oops. So only one I needed it on that was this one, but that's okay. So I'm going to put tape on this edge, this top edge. I know some people, just a sec, I did, I have a tickle in my throat now. Um, I do know those of you with, um, okay, so, um, who may have some issues with, um, the acid free and all that kind of stuff, this cardstock, um, is it listed as acid free? But in doing a bunch of my research and stuff, I found that the pro the paper making process these days, um, the vast majority of papers are neutral pH. And so you shouldn't run into problems. But I'm also of the mindset that even if you're making an album, as I've said 
from the very beginning when you're making albums such as these. You are using digital um, photos that you're printing. Even if they are vintage photos from way back, way back, my suggestion is always to scan them. The original should be in archival, excuse me, quality materials with covers over them so that they are protected. For things like albums like we're making in these kind of projects, the excuse me, touching of the photos and just the air and light, more importantly, are what are going to impact your photos far more than whether your paper is neutrally balanced pH wise, which is what the acid free is about. Um, you know, just touching the photos. But I'd rather people be able to enjoy the photos. So having digital copies of them that are printed out and putting those into the albums. There are a myriad of options in terms of printing um, uh, uh, photos and stuff. That way you can take them and have them printed and they look just like the kind that you used to print, you know, have printed. Um, I have never been thoroughly happy with photos that I print at home. Um, just because I'm, I'm weird color wise picky. I don't know why my papers print out just fine, but, um, okay. So I'm attaching this on the ends, but the photos always are a little bit odd to me. So I get my photos printed. You can, there's many places where you can go Costco, Walmart, you know, any of those kinds of places that will allow you to you have a place here called Fred Myers. You know, those are places where you can get your photos all printed. All right. So I, I did just like I did on the bottom. I notched out my corners. Um, the problem is, is I have tried to like write patterns and stuff while on the car rides, but the problem is, is, you know, especially when I have people with me, <laughs> which I wouldn't be able to do if I didn't have people with me, um, cause I'd be driving. Um, it's just, it's too hard to focus on what I need to focus on in terms of writing patterns while I, while we're driving. So, so I'm taking some crochet with me. <laughs> But I will have my computer with, and I will have access to things in order to like reset stuff and, and, uh, answer questions, that sort of thing. Um, just be aware that it may not be super immediate, but then even when I'm home, it's not super immediate. So I just, I will do my best. And since this is essentially the only vacation we're probably getting this year, God, we don't have any hockey things to go into. So Trevor's going to play beer league as a goalie this fall. So that will be cool. He'll enjoy that. All right. So I've got it wrapped around that end. Now I put this on, but this extends up above. So I'm just going to place that. Okay. This also does not need to wrap so I can shorten this down to create the natural map. And it'll extend up about half an inch up above. All right, so I just need to put it on the one end. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so I'm going to open this up, lay this down so then I can go ahead and I'm going to cut that with my craft knife. The other thing you could do is place this, set this on here temporarily. Don't stick it down. If you need it to where it doesn't shift, you can use some of that post-it note type glue stick and then you can draw that and then you can cut it with a scissors if you're not comfortable with your craft knife which I know some of you have a complicated relationship with your craft knife. <laughs> Lois. <coughs> so. so then that cuts that off to that shape. Not, kind of corner that, trim that corner on both the ends. Cut those to that slight wedge. So that puts it on the back side. Let's go ahead and get it on the front side. See, I didn't need to put the tape on the bottom edge, but I did it anyways. Ma boo boo. But I mean that in the most loving way, Lois. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot to cut this off. Lengthwise, it's way too long. Okay, so I'm lining that bottom edge up with the bottom edge of that curve section, making sure it is extending, reaching out, grabbing that little tab, dropping that down into place, notch my corners. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one and then I'll cut it. So then I'm opening it up again to get access to that curve. But you can see how we're really abusing these hinges, but done out of the fabric tape, this the hockey stick tape, which you can get on Amazon. It just works so cool. And I'm going to have to go up underneath this this um, curved edge and put some glue in there. I meant to put that on beforehand. My brain was not fully thinking.
Okay, so as you, know, as you can see here, this is up and loose. So let's go ahead and put some glue underneath there. As I said, I should have put the some uh, glue on here before I attached it down onto that curve, but it's not too bad. It lifts up nicely. I'll let that dry for a second, and then. And this, I just did a curve. You don't have to do a curve, obviously. So that's got that little bit of tape right there in that itch. So I can ink this. So I have this end to where I had that tape on there. Let's pull that up to fix that. That was easy. I need a new phone thingy on here. nicely. I like how that stripe looks, but then you know me, I love my stripes. Um, and so then I can cover the top with pattern paper. I can do the same, you know, do this side and then do this back and cover it with pattern paper. I'll probably continue my stripes at the top and top and, and the bottom and then cover that, cover the top, do the side just like I did this side. And then um, if you decide that you want to cover your insides, you can do that as well. You probably have to, again, do the, the little strips um, also along the back corners. Um, the other thing is on the bottom, you're going to run into your little nubbins unless you attach those after you put the pattern paper. But I might just put pattern paper up to them and not worry about that back corner because it doesn't really show so much in the dark. But <coughs> I like it. I must admit, I like it with it clean on the outside and not having those ribbons um, onto the outside. And this is something that you could do, this sort of box you could do with pretty much any album. Just be aware of is that when it stores, in order for it to pop out, it's going to actually store upside down. So that's just something to be aware of if you're picking a different album to do a box similar to this. And you just want to make sure the box is a little bit larger than the album itself. But um, but we could put some embellishments, some flowers and embellishments on here. Um, we could do some embellishments also on the top. We may have another project in the future where we're doing a box like this. Um, but I'm, uh, you know, and then your album pops down. Again, you can look at the album and then it just folds back up into the box. It doesn't have to be removed every time. This is just, you know, you can have it always be in the box or have it be removable depending on just what you want to do. If you don't want to have to remove it, you can also attach your spine to this piece here. And, and then it just is always with the box. Joy likes the stripes. Yeah, I know she does. 
I know she in deep down inside she likes stripes. She's a closet stripe lover. We know. So, but um, and then on as I said on the back side, I'm going to be putting the gate. But any of the pattern papers would work, and then it'll be the stripes and the dark brown on each side. It's so hard to look at one thing. Those leftover pieces. The one thing you could potentially, nah, it doesn't look right. I was going to say you can maybe splice those on there, but that doesn't look, I, I'm inclined that maybe to bring this one in on this back spine, because this is a, you know, this fleur de -lis stripe is something that, and this piece is exactly perfect size. Um, bring that in because that's something consistently on the inside. And then up on the the top and do the stripe. Maybe that's a place where I'd put more of the dark. That's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do this piece on the back and do the dark up on the top so it ties in with the dark here and here. Yeah, I think that'll work. I mean, I'm not going to cover my bottom. You could cover your bottom if you choose to. So, anyway, so we're we're done a little bit early today, but considering the fact that I had zero, zero, knock on wood, zero problems getting rolling this morning because we've had nothing but issues the last few shows, but we didn't have sound issues. We didn't have um, where to find Laura issues. <laughs> We didn't have any of those problems for a change, so we actually got started on time. That just doesn't happen. So, um, real quick though, I did promise you that I would show you, but I have to change camera angles because it's too big to and it's in suspense. So it is suspended kind of thing. So hopefully, this is going to be one that's going to be really tricky to do. Um, so, but again, this, it doesn't have all the embellishments and papers and all that kind of stuff on it. And it doesn't have the actual album in it. It has a temporary, too small album in it. So here, and the album is placed in from the top. So this is a steampunk version. So it's got this little hanging um, box that then the album, this album is, is small. It's not the right size, but the album then goes in. But so this is hanging and loose. It's not, it looks, oh, these things always look so much bigger on camera than they are. So I still have to paper the top and the base and finish papering. And this has got some embellish. This is a metal grid. So that's on the steampunk version on the it's got some other metal ribbon and that kind of thing. But on the, the fairy version, it's got this cool chicken wire stuff. So um, the other thing, too, I just want to tell you guys about is I took some of my moss that I did in the food processor. You know how we've done that in the past. And I sprayed it with um, vintage photo. Um oxide spray and so it kind of comes out this kind of weird I want to get some rusty hinge oxide too because then it instead of looking like moss it looks like rusty corrosion so for the steampunk version back in corners and nicks and craddies and stuff I'm going to use some of this and it was really easy I just sprayed it on paper towels and then I sandwiched it in between two layers of paper towels and I was able to um, use my heat gun on it to dry it in between the two paper towels. Um, but then I just let it dry overnight because I'm not ready to use it. But it comes out looking kind of rusty. Um, rather than using the dryer lint <laughs> like I did, if you recall, on the Voodoo Dollhouse. Um, so rather than doing that, taking this the moss. So I'll throw some moss in those kits. Um, and just, you can just spray it with the um, 
the Distress Oxide Spray. So, um, but anyway, so that gives you an idea of what that's looking. On this front, it's going to have, um, on the front of the little box, it's going to have some middle goodies and stuff. It's going to have um, the wings and the, the cloth face and such. And then there's some metal ribbon stuff that's going on there as well. And then there'll be some other goo -ga. So it's still, it just doesn't have all the goo -ga on it yet. Also on those, those little, um, these that I painted this copper color, these little um, dowels, they're going to have, I think I'm, I'm trying to find some beads that can go at the top and the bottom. So, and then on the fairy version, we've got some cool flowers things that I've had, whoops, I keep hitting my desk, that I've had in my stash forever. These are vintage um, Lucite little flowers. that will be able to hang on things. So, um, and this will dictate the number of kits that I can do because yeah, I've had these. These are little Lucite flower beads. But you could do these out of paper, but they're little Lucite flowers so that we can, and they come in all sorts of sizes and colors and such so that you can then pair them together and you get some little beads and stuff to go in here. So there's all these, those little lucite flowers in there. So those will be kind of hanging in there as well for the, the fairy version of this one, the fairy realm version. Um, and these will be going up. Um, these will be going up and um, probably while I'm gone, because I'll be trying to ship them after I get back. So when Trevor is calling, I'll call him back because we're almost done. But anyway, Anybody have any questions? But there's a quick little sneak peek. I'm super excited about how this one's coming out. Um, and I'm working on figuring out the album as well. So, um, all right, so that I can talk to Trevor. Let me, I'm going to go ahead and Trevor pops in. <laughs> um, I'm going to let you guys all go. So everybody have an amazing, amazing week. Um, and I will try to keep in touch on Paper Doodles as best I can. And, uh, but no class Friday or Tuesday. We'll be back again a um, uh, week from Friday. So, wow, it's going to feel weird. Uh, so, peace out to everybody. Thank you also, as always, to Joy and Lois for helping me out. I greatly appreciate it. And I greatly appreciate all of you um, coming and joining me here in my studio. And don't forget, the sale continues to about 6 o'clock my time tonight. So, peace out. Love you bunches. Bye for now.